Well, a Mountain Dew advertisement just blasted my ears, so the stream is live. I'm so sorry <laughs> about that Mountain Dew advertisement. Whoa, Trich Steamer, Silent Sentry, doing five hour energy. Whoa, look out. <laughs> I got a beer commercial. Crack down? Yeah. I have a Kids. new channel, so I just put that thing right on mute so I don't hear the echo. Yeah, regardless, I hope everybody is ready because we are live tonight on Friday. Hello, everybody. Hello, friends. Hello, How are you tonight? everybody. Hmm. Uh, you are on the forefront, witnessing our fifth run through of um, Out of the Abyss. And this is no party mode, meaning we don't want to bore you with too many beautiful and finely constructed character backstories of glittering elves and other beautiful people. Instead, we're taking you straight down into the madness. That is the Upper Dark. Hi, friends. These are all the NPCs that we shall be playing with and as. And if yep. we can just get started with a few announcements, number one being... We'd like to thank Mr. Indigo for giving us this lovely overlay. Thank you, Indigo. Yay, Indigo. Eight core design! Whoa, what's that? It's a place where you can get so many cool overlays like this one that was granted graciously. Oh my goodness! I love Indigo. He's so beautiful, and Maya does the best fan art. And with that said, I'll just go ahead and tell you uh, about what happened last time in Out of the Abyss. To our great delight, we had a hmm. We had a fun time walking in the middle of nowhere, which is really what happened. The gang escaped Valkenveld, ripping themselves free of the clutches of Ilvara, a drow priestess of Loth, who would like to have made some coin off of their their poor abused bodies. Back in Menzo Baranzi, Bazu, uh, that drow city that no one can pronounce. But, uh, but as they made noodles for each other during the night. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No, no, no me. eat it. Eat it. Only I, for me. You, oh, noodles. just for stool? Stool's noodles. <laughs> I, you can't have any. Oh, but, um,. What? Uh, yeah, sorry, Foxic. Uh, toxic Blue Sky. It's it's. Oh, I made it. I want to make. That's it me. Bleed. Toxic Blue Sky is me. You know that, right? No. <laughs> don't. Yeah, that's me. I don't. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. Cause you're the last toxic thing I know. Ugh. Uh. Beyond that, uh, the gang. It's me. Is, Send. I. I will trust you on this. The gang discovered that there are a lot of nasty things in the Underdark. Stuff that would kill them, and stuff that would passively kill them. Uh, the aim of their trip was to go to the Kuatoa village of Smutdula. And there, Shushar the Awakened, a little more awake than usual, hoped to find at least some sort of safe passage for the group, at least a moment of respite in this dangerous, deadly land, beneath the actual land, and maybe spread his own gospel to the population, if they would listen. But they discovered that there's a bit of a com competition of ideals currently among the fish people. Ah. Yep. The Sea Mother has competition from a faith that designates their worship to a deep father, Lemugugun. And the archpriest of this deep father is the daughter of the archpriest of the Sea Mother. 
someone that has little regard for Shushar and his very wild ideas. After leaving their offerings to the Sea Mother, hopefully to receive her grace and blessings, they were asked by the Archpriest if they would assist him in killing his daughter. So, uh, Ploop, Ploopin, the Archpriest of the Sea Mother, is sort of leading you guys around the city uh, from the Sea Mother Shrine, and he just sort of observes all of you, and, and he begins by saying, Shushar, I can forgive this new god that you've brought to us. But I think we can both say that neither of our faiths, newfound or otherwise, can survive with the rank fervor, fervor, fervor <laughs> of my daughter and this deep father. Certainly not. The last thing that cool toward needs are religious zealots. And everybody who knows about Kotoa <laughs> swiftly do that. He uh, continues and says, Now listen, I'm grateful for your presence. <laughs> and clearly the Sea Mother has blessed her faithful with your presence. Mm -hmm. Alright. I require you to help me put on... A devious trick. A play? We're putting on a play? <laughs> <laughs> a play on words, perhaps. She has become fascinated with live sacrifices, spilling blood into the dark lake. And it is starting to stink, more so than usual. This perverse altar. It tingles my brain simply to look at it and to hear her sermons preached from atop the grotesque sight. I think it would be best if the lot of you brought yourself up as sacrifices to allow me an opportunity to strike her down. And of course, you won't be sacrificed. We'll make sure the bonds are loose enough for you to break free. Ooh, turn it down just a slight tad. Um, I don't have blood, so I probably wouldn't be accepted as a sacrifice, seeing as how there's no blood. Perhaps not. You are the very least cognizant of what's happening. The doom that would befall you would certainly be a worthy sacrifice regardless. The knife will have to cut deeper, though, if you are in her clutches. Okay. I'm not liking that idea. Actually, well, um, we're well, all we capable just... people. I don't see what could possibly go wrong with that. Oh, yeah. I... Well, are we standing at the shrine of the Sea Mother right now? You, you sort of have moved away from it. You can still see it uh, in the distance. I see you guys are, like, down here. And you can see along here are some, like, all little right, right, right. Uh, fishing okay. uh, docks where people... People. Are, uh... <laughs> sorry, you sure. Are, uh... uh <laughs> sort of uh, grabbing, uh and digging for crabs and clams and all sorts of other things that sort of have swept up from the Dark Lake. Um, well, while we were standing by the shrine of the Sea Mother, I noticed another shrine next to the water. I can only assume that that's the shrine of this other god that you guys don't like. If, if this is like a, a rebel god or whatever, why is there a shrine in the middle of the city for it, him, person? Because 
she has gained enough followers for me to allow this flight of fancy that has clearly devolved into an unhealthy obsession. Well, why can't they just worship him and then you worship her and then everybody sings Kumbaya fish? His uh, fishy lips <laughs> just sort of like press together as he glances to Shushar and says, Clearly, you have not been aware of the Underdark for long, little one, nor of how things work here. I've lived here for a while. Um, my people don't really deal with religion often. Then they are forsaken. Unlike us, the, we you. have many gods who have come and go and graced us with their presence before a well, better then... one, stronger one, made its emergence. Many gods that come and go, so why is this why is this not just a god that cometh and then goeth? Or cometh and stayeth for a while and then goeth? It's I don't know, I just I don't see I where think it, the I don't... sacrificing of other Kuotoa are, is what's causing an issue. I mean sacrificing outsiders, that's been required in the past, but killing other Kuotoa for your <laughs> gods, that's just unheard of. And she is been hungry for such things. If we cannot find the people and travelers that 